Proper interpretation of the Bible requires an understanding of the original context in which it was written. God chose a specific time, place, and culture in which to inspire Scripture. The ancient Mediterranean and the ancient Near East of the 2nd and 1st centuries B.C. Misreadings of Scripture often result from assuming that biblical writers thought, believed, and acted as we do. One of the starkest differences between modern and ancient people is our view of cosmology. The term cosmology refers to the way one understands the structure of the universe. The Israelites believed in a cosmology that was common among the ancient civilizations of the biblical world. It encompassed three parts built up like a layer cake, a heavenly realm, an earthly realm for humans, and an underworld for the dead. This three-tier system is reflected in the Ten Commandments. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. The biblical writers thought of the earth as a flat disk atop vast waters. Rising from the deep waters below were the foundations of the world which held the earth firmly in place. This idea is reflected in several places throughout Scripture. The foundations of the earth belong to the Lord. On them he has set the world. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you know. Who measured it? I'm sure you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? What was it built on? Who laid its most important stone? He placed the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Beneath the earth lay the realm of the dead, often referred to by the Hebrew word Sheol. The Hebrew word for earth, Eretz, is also used, since the graves dug by humans represented gateways to the underworld. This underworld was also connected to the great deep, the uninhabitable abyss beneath everything. In Job, this realm is described in watery terms. The dead tremble under the waters, and their inhabitants. Sheol is naked before God, and Abaddon has no covering. Jonah's description is perhaps the most vivid. Water encompassed me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Ancient Israelites did not think of the sky as a layer of gas. They believed the heavens were separated from the earth by a solid, glass-like dome. This view is reflected in Job. Can you, like him, spread out the skies, hard as a cast metal mirror? Above the solid dome or firmament was an endless area of water. This idea of an area of land and air, sandwiched between water above and water below, is presented in the opening of Genesis. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. The firmament surrounded the earth, and its edge met the horizon, the boundary between light and darkness. It was supported by pillars or foundations thought to be the tops of mountains whose peaks appeared to touch the sky. The earth trembled and shook. The pillars of the heavens rocked back and forth. They trembled because the Lord was angry. The sky dome had portals which God could open to let the waters above fall to the earth. This idea is evident in the story of Noah and his ark. Noah was 600 years old. It was the seventeenth day of the second month of the year. On that day, all of the springs at the bottom of the oceans burst open. God opened the windows of the sky. Rain fell on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And how did the rain end? The springs at the bottom of the oceans had been closed. The windows of the sky had also been closed. And the rain had stopped falling from the sky. God and his heavenly hosts were thought to dwell above the firmament. Thick clouds veil him so that he does not see, and he walks on the vault of heaven. 
The Lord builds his palace high in the heavens. He lays its foundation on the earth. He sends for the waters in the clouds. Then he pours them out on the surface of the land. His name is the Lord. The message of Scripture is still relevant today. And what if I informed you you were born on a clock? It's the circle of the earth and not a boring old rock. It's the intricate timepiece of our infinite God. With no way of knowing how many seconds we got. Or where it is going, no slowing, just stop. The time it will come. When life takes its toll And then in front of our eyes The skies roll up like a scroll And in this coming mass confusion By the rights of its evil With the running masses tuned in We won't fight for a steeple Shine a light for the people I'm not a deacon I'm a beacon for the weak and the weary By the foolishness of preaching Can the blind find us clearly Both those the sheep They must choose their herd Yeshua's calling out to you Choose who you will serve Ship out in the whole armor of Yahweh. Try me. Try me. Try me. 